The grandma's feet were lovely as pink pearls and dressed in high heels that made her walk with a wobble, but she wore them anyways because they were pretty. Baby's feet had ten tiny toes, pale and see-through like a salamander's, and these he popped into his mouth whenever he was hungry. The mother's feet, plump and polite, descended like white pigeons from the sea of pillow across the linoleum roses, down down the wooden stairs, over the chalk hopscotch squares. Do you want this? And gave us a paper bag with one pair of lemon shoes and one red and one pair of dancing shoes that used to be white but were now pale blue. Here. And we said thank you and waited until she went upstairs. We laugh at Rachel's one foot with a girl's gray sock and a lady's high heel. Everybody wants to trade the lemon shoes for the red shoes, the red for the pair that were once white but are now pale blue, the pale blue for the lemon and take them off and put them back on and keep on like this a long time until we are tired. description of the family set a calm and innocent tone. This makes the high heels seem more like a fun experience to the girls. This also makes all the girls seem innocent, shown by how excited and eager they were to try them on. Cisneros made it seem like their shoes would have no consequences toward the girls and that the heels were just a fun little game. We have legs, skinny and spotted with satin scars where scabs were picked, but legs all our own. Good to look at and long. It's Rachel who learns to walk the best, all strode in those magic high heels. She teaches us to cross and uncross our legs and to run like a double dutch rope and how to walk down to the corner so that the shoes talk back to you with every step. Rachel is able to walk the best in the heels. Cisneros is showing that Rachel is the most mature because she is able to walk with control better than Esperanza and Lucy. Cisneros is making Rachel seem less innocent, however, she is still not mature compared to adults. This makes her more vulnerable to be objectified by society. Those shoes are dangerous. Take them off before I call the cops on you. We just run. The warning that Mr. Benny gave to the girls reveals that the shoes symbolize maturity. He is mature, unlike the girls, showing he knows what will happen if they wear shoes like that. The warning that he gave to them foreshadows how they are not mature enough to handle all the responsibilities, sexualization, and objectification the shoes will bring to them. In front of the laundromat, girls with the same fat face pretend we are invisible. They are the cousins, Lucy says, and always jealous. We just keep strutting. When the cousins ignore Rachel, Lucy, and Esperanza, Cisneros is showing how differently society views the girls compared to when they did not have the shoes. The shoes change how people view them. Women, like the cousins, are starting to treat them more like competition, and men are starting to objectify them and view them as sex objects. This shows how the shoes are not innocent, like how they first were when the girls first received them. Hey, you a pretty girl! Wanna kiss me for a dollar? No! No! Snero no. <laughs> shows how Rachel let sexual maturity get the best of her by almost letting a stranger buy her love. Even if Rachel was the most mature, she still was not able to control the consequences of sexual maturity, almost letting her be seen as more of an object than a human. Cisnero shows how the beauty given to them by the shoots puts them in danger and makes them seem like something that can be bought and owned. One Tuesday, her mother, who is very clean, throws them away, but no one complains. After the shoes are thrown away, all of the girls don't say anything about them missing because the shoes made them experience what it was to be mature and all the consequences that came with it. They did not like that they went from feeling beautiful to then being objectified. Esperanza takes away that she cannot let herself be rushed into maturity or else she will end up like an objectified woman and follow her cultural expectations. She loses some innocence from this because she now realizes what women in her time and culture have to go through. The vignette, The Family of Little Feet, from the House of Mango Street, relates to my identity because the common theme shown throughout it is the inability to mature. The shoes represent the transition to adulthood, 
When the kids put them on, they go through adult-like experiences. I relate to this because as a kid, I found the idea of growing up and having to live in the real world and have my own responsibilities trying to think about. The girls in the vignette aren't able to cope with adulthood and quickly regret the error of their ways. However, throughout the years while growing up, I've learned that maturing isn't so bad as long as you're prepared for it. And as long as you are, then you'll be prepared for any mistakes that you may make as an adult. While I haven't fully matured myself, I can now see the reality of being an adult easier to grasp than I did when I was younger. My identity is affected by this dramatic jump from childhood to adulthood because my personal identity changes drastically as my mind matures. As I grow and my mind matures, the things I do and the way I think will be different. In the vignette, the girls learn from this experience and their way of thinking is affected and they decide that they aren't mature enough for the high heels and the responsibilities that go with them. As I, as I grow up, I'll learn some of the responsibilities that can go along with adulthood as well. I'll be prepared for it. This relates to my identity. The high heels in this video represent a maturity and responsibility, which I can relate to with soccer cleats. When I was younger, I bought the cheap $100 cleats because I wasn't responsible mature enough for the $200 cleats. Here, the young girls are seen wearing high heels, but they aren't ready for the challenges they will run into. So therefore, they got rid of them because they acknowledged that they didn't want to mature fast and waited for their turn. So did I. Although I wanted the expensive cleats, I just wasn't mature and responsible enough to obtain them and take good care of them. Now that I am older and mature, I buy the $300 ones, which is what Esperanza can do with her heels when she grows more mature. What I've learned from this is the more mature you grow, the better advantages you have in getting what you want and more freedom. In the vignette, the girls commonly face the challenge of wanting to grow faster than they are ready for. They think that it is fun and games and you just wear heels and act mature. What they are not aware of is the responsibility that comes with this. They do not understand that as an adult, you have to be prepared to handle the challenges that come with maturity. This is similar to everyday life as in children are fast to try to mature, not knowing the responsibility it takes and the challenge it is. Children do not realize that the much more mature that they act, the more they will be faced with challenges. When these challenges come, there will be no one to help them. This is where children are separated from adults and children do not know how to handle these situations like adults would. Was I not videotaping this whole time?